بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا الحمد لله as we find ourselves in these blessed days we remind ourselves of the tremendous opportunity that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us in Ramadan. Our beloved Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in a sound hadith related by Sayyidina Anas ibn Malik that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said "If'alul khayra dahraku Do the good in your entire lifetime. وَتَعَرَّضُ لِنَفَحَاتِ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ But turn yourselves to the breezes of divine mercy. Do the good your entire life. But turn yourself, make yourself ready and avail yourself of the breezes of divine mercy. Because there's times when there's special opportunities that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala facilitates. And one of these times is the month of Ramadan. But in our lifetime, each of us knows that there's opportunities where there's some good that we could do, some act of care, of concern, of assistance, of turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that one could avail oneself of an opportunity of drawing close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we could take. So the Prophet said, do the good your entire lifetime, but make the most of the breaths of divine mercy. وَتَعَرَّضُوا لِنَفَحَاتِ اللَّهِ فَإِنَّ لِلَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ نَفَحَاتٍ مِّن رَحْمَتِهِ يُصِيبُ بِهَا مَنْ يَشَاءُ مِنْ عِبَادِهِ For Allah has breaths of divine mercy, these winds of opportunity that reach whomever He wills of His servants. So, turn yourself to those opportunities. And one of those opportunities is this month. And what is the opportunity in this month? The opportunity in this month is not simply the acts of good that we do. The opportunity in this month is not the acts of good that we do, but what they are a means to. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah Al-Baqarah about the month of fasting. And what is it a means of? That to لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ That you may attain taqwa. لَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ That you may attain thankfulness. But what people don't pay attention to, that even taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not an end in itself. Thankfulness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not an end in itself. Typically when people quote the verses on fasting, they quote verses 183 to 185. But many of the, the scholars of tafsir and the, and the ulama of Islam have mentioned that the ultimate purpose of fasting is mentioned in the very next verse. After the verses of fasting, the very next verse is, وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ if, And if my servants ask you regarding me, then I am indeed near. If my servants ask you regarding me, what is my reality? I am indeed near. Inni qareeb. I am close. This is the purpose of fasting, right? The acts of worship that we engage in. The, those spiritual aims that we have of attaining taqwa of Allah, of attaining thankfulness for His blessings. These are all means to what? To closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is what we should be striving for and which fasting opens a door of realization for the one who reflects. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, I answer the call of the one who calls upon me when they call. So let them answer my call. Right? Because we call upon Allah and this calling upon Allah of course is not just through dua. Your prayer, your fasting, your charity, and your life are all potentially calls to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The sincere believer, their state at any moment 
is expressing a calling upon Allah. The righteous believer breathes with a sense of neediness for Allah. Their state calls to Allah. They're yearning for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, I answer the call of those who call upon me when they call. But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُوا لِي So let them answer my call. وَلْيُؤْمِنُوا بِي And let them believe in me. لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْشُدُونَ So that they may be rightly guided. Rightly guided to what? To realize that closeness, that is reality. And very often we forget this, the, the higher aim of our religion. Right? That what is, you, what are we seeking in life? And ultimately it is this reality of closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the hadith related by Imam Bukhari and it's a divine hadith, it's a hadith Qudsi. The Prophet sallallahu relates that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says whoever shows enmity to a friend of mine, to one of the awliya of Allah, I declare war upon. And, and then who are the awliya of Allah? Right? Those beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My, and it be, Allah subhanahu wa tells us, My servant draws close to me by nothing more beloved to me than what I've made obligatory upon them. And my servant continues to draw close to me through supererogatory works until I love them. But who is a friend of Allah? Someone who's close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's a, the, the acts of good, both obligatory and supererogatory, are nawafil, the sunnas. Right? These are means, they're not ends in themselves. They're, but they're the necessary means to what? To attain closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is a reality that is repeated. And we recite Surah Al-Waqi'ah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us of three categories of people. Right? There's those of the left hand who are the failures, who fail, who, have tur who turn away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But then of those who are successful, there's Ashab al-Yameen, the people of the right. But then... What's the other category? There is the muqarrabun, right? The sabiqun, right? The foremost. Was sabiqun as sabiqun? Ulaik al muqarrabun. The foremost. The foremost. Who are they? Ulaik al muqarrabun. They are those who've been brought close to Allah subhanahu wa taala. And this is something that we should reflect on because it's a reality that Allah subhanahu wa taala reminds us of, right? In Surah Fatir, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala categorizes His creation, actually the ser His servants from amongst creation, into three levels. In Surah Fatir, verse 28. Amongst them are those who have wronged themselves. And amongst those are those who are. And Muqtasid has several senses. Those who are moderate, right, who are doing a, a moderate amount. Or it can also mean that they're between excellence and struggle. And sometimes they do well, and sometimes they have serious struggle. وَمِنْهُمْ سَابِقُمْ بِالْخَيْرَاتِ بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ And amongst them are those who outstrip others by permission of Allah. Outstrip others in what? in drawing close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in attaining closeness. So all these spiritual works that we're engaged in and all the great social dimensions of Ramadan that we're engaged in, we should strive to make these clearly a means of seeking the closeness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't just have an iftar because you say, oh my goodness, I have invited my uncles for iftar. So you just invite them for iftar just because Make all these actions means to seek closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, there's people in Canada who are kind of worried because I just came from, from Toronto because there's a phenomenon that Muslims are congregating in large numbers at 12.30 at night at Tim Hortons which is like our more refined version of Dunkin Donuts. And there's like Long lineups at 12.30, quarter to one, one o'clock. I know because I've been part of those lineups. Right, so you take your kids for some donuts or some ice cream at one o'clock at night. And you know you could just do it because 
you know, they're kind of upset that they had to be in Taraweeh. I was standing next to this one kid at our Taraweeh in, in Toronto, and after six rak'ahs, the imam got up and said, Allah, but the kid looked up and said, Dad, he said, there's more, right? <laughs> so just, you just did it to placate your kids. But all of these things, why would you do it? To seek closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to earn His pleasure through, through the good in all its manifestations. But to be able to seek the closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there's a few things that we need to remind ourselves of. The first of them is to be able to seek the closeness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we need to we need to gain beneficial knowledge. What is beneficial knowledge? Imam Ghazali defined it really beautifully. He said, it's ilmu ma yuqarribuka ila Allah. It is the knowledge that will enable you to draw closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's not just the, you know, what's called the BIM, the bare Islamic minimum, right? That you just want to know, can I get out of the haram, right? But there's much more than that. For example, this recently, uh, a, a few of us were going through the sunnahs of travel. Because we were covering the fifth of travel in, in this class. So I paused and covered, Imam Nawawi in, in his encyclopedic work of Majmu'a, covers 62 sunnahs related to travel. And there's amazing sunnahs. Almost 10 of them, if you want to learn about what Islam has to say about the treatment of animals and the environment, read the sunnahs of travel. Many of those don't apply directly to us, you know, because although they do at one level, because if you treat your car properly, it will pollute less, right? And give you more mileage and it's advantageous. But eight to 10 of the sunnahs relate to how you treat your animal in travel, right? Which teaches you so much just about the the broad ethos of our religion. That not only do you take care of the animal, but Imam, the expression of Imam Nawawi is, and you and you maslahat al hayawan, that you take care of the best interests of the animal in terms of how long you ride the animal, how much you burden it with, when you stop. And he mentions a whole number of considerations related not just to fulfilling the rights of the animal, but the best interests of the animal. Right? To learn how to draw closer to Allah, we need to gain knowledge. Right? That, okay, I'm traveling, there's all kinds of opportunities. And you appreciate, not just by the things you do, but you appreciate the beauty of the teachings of the Blessed Prophet ﷺ. One of the sunnahs of travel is that if you're going in a group, and you're you know, either the person responsible for the group, right? or you're able to assist the group, the sunnah is to walk behind the group. And it's not just out of humility, it's out of practicality. If you've ever been at an airport, one of the common things you see is these young people who are um, you know, carrying all the luggage and stuff, and they look back, and their elderly parents are, are lost like 20, 30 steps behind. Or the kid ran into the toy shop, because the parents got, got ahead. The Prophet used to walk behind his companions, why? To look, did someone need assistance? Could someone be helped? Right? Is someone struggling so they should slow down a bit? Right? So he was co command commanding the people he was going with from behind. It also expresses humility. It's not just, okay, follow me. Right? It's going together. There's many, many lessons to be learned from it, but this is a critical aspect. And very often, we get complacent, right? Because Seeking beneficial knowledge is not just, okay, I know how to pray, I know this, I know that, my, my deen is a functional whole. But it is about bringing excellence, bringing the, the beauty of the prophetic way. It's taking advantage of all those opportunities that the Prophet ﷺ has shown us of seeking the closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's something one should always connect to. This is why the Prophet ﷺ said in the hadith related by Bukhari Muslim, Whomever Allah wishes well for, man yuridillahu bi khayra, yufaqihu fi deen. He grants deep understanding of religion. Deep understanding of religion is what? Is to have the ability and understanding to seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in whatever circumstances He's placed you in. Like how do you seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at work? There's all kinds of sunnahs related to work. And most people... Who, you know, many many people when they become religious, they see work as a distraction from their spiritual life. 
But if you look at the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, your work is central to your spiritual life. It is a key daily spiritual work you engage in. The Prophet ﷺ said, طَلَبُ الْحَلَالِ فَرِيضَةٌ بَعْدَ الْفَرَائِمِ That seeking a lawful living is a duty after the prescribed duties. That it too is of the most beloved means of drawing closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But how do you do that? You need to gain understanding of religion to be able to seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's a commitment that one should be nurturing in this month. That how do I take the means of drawing closer? Knowledge is not just about learning new things. It's also about reminding oneself. If you did a personal analysis and, and you looked at your prayer and asked yourself, are there sunnahs that I'm forgetfully omitting? You could, any, and try this. Any one of us could easily identify five sunnahs that we don't do just because, oh, I forgot about that. Or, you know, just you stop caring about doing that. One of the benefits of knowledge is that it reminds you of what you already knew. That otherwise you just read the Quran once and I read it. And you keep repeating it because the lessons take time to be internalized. The second key of seeking closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that you have to bring consistency in your spiritual works. Right? The Prophet ﷺ is described by his beloved wife Sayyidah Aisha, وَكَانَ أَحَبَّ الدِّينِ إِلَيْهِ مَا دَاوَمَ عَلَيْهِ صَاحِبُهُ That the most beloved of religion, meaning the most beloved of religious practice to the Prophet ﷺ and therefore to Allah ﷻ was that which was done most consistently by someone. Right? Because that consistency is indicative of sincerity, of trueness. And that's one of the, the, the things that one should be thinking of as we slowly begin to enter the second half of this month. That of the spiritual works that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has reminded me of in this month, what can I make part of my consistent routine? And what routine of fasting will I have after Ramadan? What routine of night worship will I have? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa taught us about Taraweeh, but the ulama mentioned the hadith about praying eight rak rakahs at night. The Prophet used to do that in Ramadan and after Ramadan. And one of the wisdoms why the ulama mentioned that hadith in the chapter on Taraweeh is that if you do Taraweeh in the month of Ramadan, there's something that comes after, right, which is, this is meant to be a bridge to bring the sunnah of night worship into one's life. Look at the other spiritual words. How does one bring them in, in a consistent basis, your Quran, etc and to strive to bring excellence into them. Each of those things that you, you, that you do in your religious life have this commitment. How will I be able to seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through it? Right? And to be always working on that. The third, and this is arguably the most important means of seeking the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is that you have to always remember that the way of seeking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not relate only to your relationship with Allah, but it relates to how you are with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's creation. Right? The believers most perfect in faith are those best in character. They're not those who are best in worship and prayer and Quran, it's those who are best in character. The closest door to the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is how you conduct yourself with His creation. And that's something that you have to be thinking about in this month. That how do I change my relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's creation because that is a key to changing your relationship with Allah. You want to know what your standing with Allah is? Look at how you are in challenging encounters with other people. When someone annoys you, when someone upsets you, when someone says those harsh words, how do you respond? The believers most perfect in faith are those best in character, said the Prophet <laughs> And where is this tested? It is tested in three relationships. You want to see where you are in terms of closeness to Allah? Look at how you are with your parents. The Prophet ﷺ said, the pleasure of Allah is in the pleasure of one's parents. And Allah's displeasure, and Allah's anger is in their anger. So ask yourself how you are in that relationship. How are you with your spouses? In the hadith on the perfection of faith being excellence of character, the Sahih hadith by Imam Tirmidhi, the Prophet ﷺ continued, and the best of you are those best to their spouses. And so if you're coming every day to the masjid and praying sunnahs, but you're harsh and mean and rude to your husband or your wife, 
This means that you have the forms of Islam, but its realities are not yet in your heart, and you need to rectify it. If you want to seek the closeness of Allah, you will not attain it without working on how you are with His creation. And the third critical relationship is how you are with children. The Prophet said, whoever is not respectful of our elders and merciful to our children is not of us. And that's critical. How are you with your children? And it's not how you are generally. It's when they test you is when character is manifest. When they annoy you, when they upset you. You got a new, you, you convince yourself to get the new MacBook Pro with the retina display. And you're, you're looking at it you're, and your kid came and he saw some cartoon or something, threw it out of the window and it smashed. How are you then? That's the test of your character. Okay. And so this is one of the keys. Like how are you with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's creation? If you want to seek the closeness of Allah, remember the words of the Prophet said, it is only the merciful who are granted mercy by the all-merciful. Be, be merciful to those on earth and the Lord of the heavens will be merciful to you. So you ask yourself, if I'm seeking the closeness to Allah, how am I with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's creation? And finally, in terms of seeking the closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one of the most important sunnahs of the month of Ramadan that a lot of people neglect is to make a great amount of dua during the fast. The Prophet ﷺ says there's three categories of people whose dua is not rejected. One of them is the fasting person until they break their fast. And this is a sunnah throughout the day to make dua. And particularly when breaking the fast. Imam Shafi'i said, as Imam Nawi relates from him in Kitab al Afkar, that it is understood from the sunnah that one should make dua not only for oneself and one's family and the people one knows, but one should also be actively making dua for the general interests, the masalih of the believers and of humanity. And you should be making dua right, for rain. You should be making dua for, for food prices not to go, go up because of the drought, for relief for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's creation. You should be making dua for the environment. The Prophet ﷺ made dua for the milk that, that was in the udders. Right? And the crops that were in the fields. But that's part of concern for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's creation. Right? To make extensive dua. Right? And what does dua express? Dua expresses that meaning of closeness, of recognizing your neediness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and all creation's neediness for the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So take, take advantage of that opportunity. And the best of what you could ask from Allah is what He asks of you. Right, the best of what you could ask Allah is of what He asks of you. So these are three of the keys to seeking the closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? The, the first being, seek beneficial knowledge. Right? Knowledge that enables you to seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His closeness in your life. <coughs> Secondly, have consistent spiritual routines of worship that you sustain throughout your life. But that's the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu and the third is, transform the way you are with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's creation. Have deep concern. What is religion? A deen nasiha Religion is sincere concern. Religion is sincere concern. None of you believes until they wish for others as they wish for themselves. That's not wishful thinking. It is wish that is concern expressed in righteous conduct when tested in those relationships particularly with your parents, with your spouse, with your children. And that concern is manifest in your dua. What you care about in your relationship with Allah is manifest in what you ask Allah in your dua. What do you ask for in dua? Do you just parrot some words or just make demandless to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Or are you truly seeking His closeness and pleasure and love? And what you ask for His creation. How much dua do you make for others? That's a sign of how much you care about them. And these are tremendous days of opportunities. We'll close with this hadith Qudsi, this divine hadith that the Prophet ﷺ relates. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِذَا تَقَرَّبَ الْعَبْدُ إِلَيَّ شِبْرًا تَقَرَّبْتُ مِنْهُ ذِرَاعًا That if my servant draws close to me by a handspan, I draw close to them by an arm's length. 
وإذا تقرب إلي ذراعا تقربت منه باعا and if they draw close to me by, by an arm's length I draw close to them by two arm's lengths وإذا أتاني يمشي أتيته هرولة and if they come to me walking I rush to them this is the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that door of mercy is always open and we, we just have to direct ourselves to it and turn to it right? and find a way of actually walking on the straight path right? we are on the straight path if we have faith but we always ask إِهْدِنَا الصِّرَاطِ المستقيم, guide us to the straight path because we want to be of those who are taking consistent steps of seeking the closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is the opportunity that we have throughout our lives right? do the good your, all, your entire lifetime said the Prophet sallallahu but Allah has, in the days of your lifetime, divine breaths of mercy. So, avail yourselves of them. If my servants ask you regarding me, then I am indeed near. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us of this month. I am indeed near. I answer the call of the one who calls upon me when they call. So let them answer my call. Let them truly believe in order that they be rightly guided. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be of those who answer the divine call, who seek His closeness, and who take the means of attaining His closeness, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not let down the hopes of anyone who hopes in Him. Wa sallallahu ala sayyidina wa nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam wa taslimam kathira wa alhamdulillahi wa alhamdulillahi wa alhamdulillahi wa alhamdulillahi wa alhamdulillahi wa alhamdul